Alright, Shalom. Uh, first and foremost, I want to give all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, by Hashem Yahweh Shai. Double honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone of all well, and blessings to the hopeful elect teaching this word in all sincerity and in truth. Um, yeah, I just wanted to go into a, a few things, man, based on the talk of faith, uh, what we're required to do in order to enter into the chariot, man, and basically um, uh, holding on to the faith, man, you know. Uh, Despite the manifold temptations that come our way to basically hinder us from uh, staying in staying in the faith. Alright, so I'm going to start off with this man. Acts 14, Acts chapter 14 verse 22. Confir confirming the souls of the disciples and exhorting them to continue in the faith. Alright, so first and foremost man, I'm going to just go into this first part of this verse here man. We're supposed to be exhorting each other to continue in the faith. All right, if you've got a brother to your left, a brother to your right, coming out there on the highways and the byways, man, our main duty, man, and brothers, on, you know, coming out to listen on the other side, our main job and our main duty is to basically edify, man, and to continue and to, to exhort them brothers to continue in the faith, man, through means of holy conversation, and uh, which goes back to the word conduct, man, because if they see us doing it, man, getting down, not being lukewarm, coming out every week, week in, week out, man, all right, despite the manifold temptations that we have to go through throughout the week to even get to that day in the week to come out there and teach the word as we stand there boldly and present our bodies as a living sacrifice that is spoken of, like it's spoken of in Romans <coughs> 12 chapter in the first verse, excuse me. All right, so it says, confirming the, the souls of the disciples and exhorting them to continue in the faith. All right, now let me just pause there and I'm going to get a quick precept because... We need to go into that word faith, okay? So this is uh, Ephesians 2 and 8. For by grace are you saved through faith, all right? So we've got to exhort each other, exhort one another to continue in the what? In the faith, all right? So for, by grace are you saved through faith and not that of yourselves, all right? It is the gift of Yahweh. So you've got to understand that the scripture says that a man can receive nothing except it be given him from the heavenly father, all right? And by grace are we saved through what? Faith. And not that of ourselves, because we can't save ourselves. The scripture says, no man shall buy you. And behold, we are yet this day in our captivity. A captivity under who? The so-called white person, man. The Edomites, the so-called white people. They got us in captivity to this very day, man. They got us uh, going to them for the one of all things. We can't eat shit or breathe without them saying so, man. We got to breathe in their chemtrail, man. We got to eat them GMO foods, all right? But the thing is, now... We know that his society is going down. Why? Because we got the free speech and we're going out there on the highways and the byways and we're cursing him down, cursing him out in his own kingdom, man. All right. So that goes to show right there, hey, we're revealing him for the devil that he is, man. Job 9 and 24 says the earth is given into the hand of the wicked. But you must know that in order to continue in this, man, the Lord said that we were supposed to exhort one another to continue in the faith because it takes great faith to go out there and present your body as a living sacrifice, man. It can, great, takes great faith just to go out there, just to do a video, man. Put yourself out there on the front lines, man, to exhort your fellow laborers, man, to continue in the faith. Okay, so let's go back to Acts 14 and 22. It says, confirming the souls of the, of the disciples and exhorting them to continue in the faith. And that we, through much tribulation, enter into the kingdom of Yahweh. Bar Hashem Yahweh Shai. So you've got to understand that this ain't going to be a thing where you just go and skip into a chariot, man. It ain't going to be that simple. The, the Lord said... Through much tribulation, we're going to enter into the uh, into the kingdom, man. All right, not a little bit. So you have to understand that the Lord, he wants, he, look, man, the Lord is vouching for a fighter out here, man. The Lord ain't dealing with faint hearts and idle hands. The Lord ain't dealing with sluggards, man. The Lord ain't look, dealing with the man that goes two ways, the guy that's lukewarm. Because Apostle Taha, he's been speaking about lukewarm brothers in GMS for a, what, for a long time, man. All right. So, Lord willing, hey man, me first and foremost, man, personally, the scripture says, seek your own salvation. I hope that I ain't one of those guys because we got to be sure, we got to be apt to teach. All right. And the only reason why you're going to do the work, be you hearers of the word and not doers only, is because you have that, uh, the gift of faith, man, which was given you from the heavenly father. The scripture says, ye have, cho ye have not chosen me, I have chosen you. All right. But you know what, man, there's a saying in, in that show, Spider Man, man. Where they say, with uh, great power comes great responsibility, all right? Because, you know, Peter said to Yahweh Shai, Peter, if you love me, feed my lamb and feed my sheep. So that's what we are commanded to do. So now let me jump straight into Surah, the second chapter. Now I'm going to start from the top. I want to get to the point in verse 12 on down. Okay, so Surah 2 and 1. My son, 
If thou comest to serve the Lord Yahweh, prepare thy soul for temptation and set thy heart aright. Because the Hebrew word for the heart is la'ab, which is your mind. Love. All right. So it says, and set your mind aright and constantly endure and make not haste in time of trouble. Yeah, when things get turned up, get a little bit heated, man. Get a little bit spicy for you, man. You can't make haste in time of trouble, man. Now, that's the time where you got to stand strong and stand stiffly. What is uh, Ezra, um, in the book of says, Second Ezra, the Lord, uh, Ezra asked uh, the angel, who, who are these? And, 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 and the angel said to him, these are those, the men that stood stiffly for the name of the Lord. And they were getting crowned by Yahweh Shai himself, man. All right. By the one that was, he had a stature that was taller than all the rest. And they were receiving crowns by Yahweh Shai, man. The ones that stood stiffly for the name of the Lord. That, the ones that did not make haste in time of trouble, man. All right. The ones that understood that through the much tribulation, that's what, that's what the cost was going to be. The Lord said, much is given, much is required, that you were going to enter into the kingdom of the Most High, man. Okay, now let me jump down to the point in verse 12. It says, Woe be to faith, fearful hearts and faint hands and the sinner that goeth, goeth two ways. Yeah, because the scripture says a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways, man. You can't be lukewarm in this thing. You're either, caught or you, you're either hot or you're going to be cold, man. All right? So I'd rather be hot. That's why hey, the Apostle Gabar said, man, you got you to shine like a beacon in this thing, man. All right? A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. you got to let your, your lights... So shine forth before all men, man. All right, we gotta be unrebukable, blameless, man. We gotta be doing this work in season, out of season. We gotta be apt to teach, man. We gotta be on fire for this work, man. To do this work, this ain't gotta be a thing where oh, you feeling like oh, I gotta do the work. It's like a chore to me, man. That means that you really ain't passionate about this, man. And really, the pa the word passion comes from the Latin, I believe, it's, it's parte, which comes from uh, sufferings, man. So. If you're going through manifold temptations and, and tribulations in this thing, hey man, the Lord said you were going to be suffering in this, man. But the Lord said what? Make not haste in time of trouble. When you are suffering, man, don't make haste, man. Turn that aid. Let that be your passion, man. Let that fuel your fire, man. All right? Let that be your zeal, so to speak. Okay? Um, hey, like the script, hey, like the, the saying in the world, no pain, no gain, man. Uh, if you ain't going through pain, you ain't going to gain what? The kingdom, man. It says... Verse 13, woe unto him that is faint-hearted, for he believeth not. Yeah, because you can't say that you believe. You say you believe. Yeah, I've got faith, I believe. But then you ain't doing the work. All right, because the scripture says in the book of James, the first chapter. In fact, let me jump to that real quick. All right. Yeah, I believe, man. Trust me, man. Fam, I believe. You know, I, you know I'm doing the work, man. I'm, I believe, you know, you know. No, you're not even doing the work, man. But you, you say you believe, man. You're just being a sluggard. You're being a faint, uh, faint-hearted individual, man. Okay. This is James... Uh, chapter 1 Verse 22 I'm going to start from verse 22 In fact let me start from verse 21 <clears throat> Wherefore lay apart all filthiness And superfluity of naughtiness And receive with meekness The engrafted word Which is able to save your souls Why? Because it tells us in uh, Isaiah 33 and 6 That wisdom and knowledge Were going to be the what? Stability of our times all right, and strength of our salvation because the time of Jacob's trouble is coming around the corner, man. There's gonna be a time, man. Hey, when they're gonna, the enemy's gonna come in like a flood, and the Lord said he was gonna lift, raise up a standard against us, uh, against him, man. So you gotta have faith in that. The scripture says in Proverbs eighteen and ten that the name, the uh, the uh, uh, the name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run into it and is safe. The ones that are gonna call upon the name of the Lord in their lands of, of their captivity, hey, that, that's gonna be the elect, man. So we got to hey, call upon it and to have faith. We've got to have faith in, in order to call upon that name. All right. And it says, receive with meekness the engrafted word, which is able to save your soul. Souls, be ye doers of the word and not hearers only deceiving your own selves. Yeah, because you ain't fooling the most high. You're fooling your own self. Because you, yeah, I, you know, I got faith, but I ain't, I ain't going to do the work though. Like, you know, but I know I'm not, you know, I'm not going to be saved. Why? Because I got the name of the Lord though. But you ain't doing the work. How can you say you're going, you know, you're going to be saved, but you ain't doing the work? Get down. How can you say you're going to be, you know, you're going to be saved uh, by your Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai, but you ain't doing, you ain't doing the work of the Most High, man? All right, you ain't being a doer of the word. You're just being a hearer only, man. All right, being being one of those that has the faint hands. All right, it says, for if any be a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like unto a man beholding his face, his natural face in a glass. Alright, so if you look, man, if you're being a hero of the word and not a doer, man, then basically you're fooling your own self. You ain't fooling your Yahweh Shai, 
So you got to get down for your crown, man. you got to get down for the crown that Ezra saw in a vision that Yahweh Shai was crowning 144,000 men that stood stiffly for the name of the Lord, man. The ones that the Lord came to defend in their time of trouble, man. The Lord, the one that the Lord imputed not iniquity upon when he sent his son to come and gather his elect, man. All right, come out of her, my people, man, so that you be not partake of her, of her sins. Because when the Lord comes back, man, with that shout... He's going to gather his elect into the chariot, man. And that's when we're going to get beamed up out here. But the Lord ain't going to fight for you if you ain't fighting for him, man. All right? This is quid pro quo, baby, man. All right? This for that. The Lord said, you do this for me, I'm going to do this for you, man. And the Lord said he's not a man that he, sh he should like. All right? He and he doesn't change. So let's go back into Sirach, the, the second chapter, and uh, the 13th verse. But woe unto him, woe meaning destruction, unto him that is faint-hearted, for he believeth not. Therefore, he shall not be defended. Okay, so the Lord ain't going to defend you, man. Your soul is not going to be saved in the time to come, man. All right? Because you, you are faint-hearted, man. All right? Because you didn't believe. You really, you were speaking like you, you know, you were just being a parrot. You were speaking like you believed. Yeah, man. But the script, wait, what did Paul say, man? Not the speech of them that popped. I will not hear the speech of them that popped up, but the power, man. There's got to be power. There's got to be passion in you, man. All right? You've got to be experienced and you've got to be going, you've got to be in them trenches, man. Going through the trials and the tribulations in order to speak on them with, with perfect zeal, man. Uh, accuracy, because why? Because you've been through it, man. All right? Understanding the scriptures, man. Getting uh, wisdom. and uh, Wisdom is the principal thing, right? So you've got to understand what it is that you're really speaking about. You've got to feel these words, man. All right? You've got to be, uh, you gotta be in it to win it. You've got to believe it, okay? And it says, um, it says, Woe unto you that have lost patience, verse 14. And what will you do when the Lord shall visit you? All right, what are you going to do? Hey, like that song in um, Crossroads, man. Uh, what, what are you going to do when judgment comes for you, man? What are you going to do? Because at the end of the day, man, hey, judgment is coming, man. All right, and, and every idle word that men shall give, they shall give account thereof in the day of judgment. The scripture also says that. Let me get this precept real quick, man, before I come back. Before I come back to that, it says uh, 2 Corinthians 5 and 10. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Hamashayak, uh, that everyone may receive the things done in his body, according to that he have done, whether it be good or bad. So look, man, we've got to worship Yahweh Shai, man. He died for our sins, all right? But we're going to appear before the judgment seat of Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai, man. And we got, look, man, we're going to have to give account for everything that we've done. Whether it be good or bad. So you look, man, the things that you're doing right now, man, if you're kicking back, man, the Lord sees that. If you ain't, if you don't believe deep down, the Lord knows that you don't believe deep down. You're fooling your own selves, man. You're being a hero of the word and not a doer only. The Lord sees that. You're not exhorting your fellow laborers to continue in the faith, exhorting them, man. Then the Lord sees that you ain't doing this because you're not sincere. That's why we say, hey, shalom to the sincere Archim teaching this word among the four winds, man. We ain't out here to... Uh, 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 to basically fake the funk, man. Uh, we've got a great responsibility. Like I said, I always say this, man. Yahweh Shai said to Peter, if you love me, feed my lamb and feed my sheep, man. And he did that through sincerity, man. He wasn't doing it, oh, this is a chore. Fuck, man, Yahweh Shai telling me I've got to do this, but bare work, blood. Nah, man, Yahweh Shai, man. Look, man, Peter understood through the spirit what he had to do, man. All right? Because it was real. Things were revealed unto him. Through the faith, man, the Lord says that a man can receive nothing except to be given him from the Heavenly Father. So he was chosen. That was his lot. All right. And he sincerely believed. All right. Um, and it says, verse 15, they that fear the Lord will not disobey his word. Yeah, because you've got a lot of badass children running around out here today, man. All right. Still eating pork. Hey, man, they know they're Israelites. Hey, they all got the Internet. They've seen GMS. They've seen... The camp's like, hey man, you know, you people are going to be destroyed because you, you're too, you know, you're stiff-necked and you're hard-hearted, man. That's the same thing that Stephen was saying to them wicked-ass Jews over there in Jerusalem, man. All right, I mean, they, they, they stoned him, man. All right, so you got to understand, look, man, I'm telling you right now, if you don't receive the engrafted word that is able to save your souls, you're going to be through. All right, and, and, and that's just it. And it says, and they that love him will keep his way. So you got to keep the volume of the book, man. you got to keep these precepts, man. All right. You gotta keep the law, man. You gotta, to the best of your ability, you gotta walk in in the way of righteousness, man, rather than as opposed to the way of wickedness, which is what this society promotes, man. All right. So now let me go to uh, Sirach five and seven. It says, "Make no tarrying to turn to the Lord Yahweh, and put not off from day to day." Yeah, you can't be, you know, getting all lots of days in this thing, thinking you can just, oh man, I know I got, you know, I got to do this video. I'll do it next week, man. Fuck it, man. No, man, because. 
there's a lot of guys out here that are being busy bodies, man. Like getting into them, getting, uh, getting uh, into stuff in the world, more worldly things than doing the work of the most side. This is supposed to be our main profession, man. All right, you're supposed to put this work above everything that you do. Everything else should come after doing the work of the most side, man. That's why, look, man. The scripture says in Peter's. Hey, give diligence to make your calling and election sure. And the diligent ones are going to be the ones that are going to keep the Lord's ways, man. The ways of the Lord. That are going to be doers of the word and not hearers only, man. That are going to be watching, man, for the prophecies, man. All right? Blowing the trumpet. Doing the shows. Going out there every week. Being apt to teach. All right? And that's what we're doing, man. Lord willing, we be those men. It says, put not off from day to day. For suddenly shall the wrath of the Lord Yahweh come forth. And, thy and in thy security, yeah, when you think you're safe, or, yeah, I'm, not, I'm cool, though, I'm a mate, I'm all right. You know, the Lord said, in thy security, thou shalt be destroyed and perish in the day of vengeance, man. All right, because, hey, Paul said, what did he say, man, when he wrote that letter to the uh, Israelites in Thessalonica, man? He said, look, man, uh, the, you have no need that I write unto you because you know that the day of the Lord is, uh, out of the times and the seasons, you know that you have no need that I write unto you. Why? Because we can see the signs of the end, man. The other day, we just had a red sun, all right? The, the sky all turned orange and shit. We had a solar eclipse, and you had Hurricane Harvey, Hurricane Maria, Hurricane Jose, earthquake over there in uh, 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 Mexico, 8.3 magnitude. Puerto Ricans are getting fucked over now. They got the internet. They probably scoffed against the men of the Lord, man. Apostle Ty even said that, man. So you got to understand that, hey, the Lord, everyone's going to have to... Uh, look, man, every idle word that men have spoken, they give an account thereof, man, all right? And didn't we just read in first, uh, Second Corinthians, the fifth chapter, that everyone's going to appear before the judgment seat? We ain't praying to be saved just for the time that we're in, the bodies that we were in in this life. We're praying for all the sins that we were doing in our past lives, man. All right? So that's why you got to pray that the Lord imputes not iniquity upon you, man, when he sends his son to come and gather us out of this place. All right? So you got to understand that, because really, if we're going based on the things that we just did in this life, even this life alone, we should be put to death for the things that we have done, man. Because all have sinned and fall, sh fall short of the glory of the Most High. So you've got to understand that it's only the Lord that's going to be able to save us in this time. But there are certain requirements that are going to allow us to be saved in the end. Which is basically what? Following the ways and the laws of, uh, of the Most High, man. And it says, um, yeah, and in thy security thou shalt be destroyed and perish in the day of vengeance, man. And the, and the day of vengeance is near, man. All right, you don't want to be caught out there unawares, man. You gotta be attentive. You gotta be constantly stirring that pot, man. All right, <coughs> like when you're making a soup, and I always, <coughs> I'm gonna make this analogy, Slakio. <coughs> when you're making a soup, you gotta always be attentive to that soup, man. Make sure that it ain't burning out. All right, you gotta be adding a little bit more spice if it's too mild. Sometimes it might be milder than others. Sometimes it might be spicier than others. But you gotta find that balance, and it's the same thing in this truth, man. All right. Sometimes things might seem a little bit too hot. Sometimes things are a little bit too mild. But really and truly, man, you got to always be watching and making sure that that soup is on point. Why? Because when the Lord said feed his sheep, man, we got to, the, 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 the food that we're eating, man. We got to now give that that same thing that we've now learned and digested. We've now got to give that to the sheep that are coming into the fold, man. All right. Because we're feeding them and they have to grow underneath us, us as well, man. All right, we've got to be bearing fruit in this thing, man. We've got to look, man. We've got to show our faith through our works, man. We've got to be in it to win it, man. All right, great responsibilities, man. All right, so with that, man, Lord willing, you are Kimber edified, man. You know, we've got to be stay being watchmen, man. All right, and staying in prayers, Arkin, because look, man, like I said, a man can, well, like the scriptures say, not me. The scripture says a man can receive nothing except to be given him from the heavenly father. And Ephesians 2 and 8, faith is a gift. <coughs> well, I'll tell you what. Part of the commandments is pray without ceasing. And that's a commandment right there. That's a precept. So at the end of the day, if you ain't praying, it's because you don't have faith. All right. Only a man that's going to pray to the, to the heavenly father is a man that has faith in Yahweh Hashem, Yahweh Shai. The man that's using his faith to the best of his ability, man. Using his faith to pray to the Most High Yahweh Hashem, Yahweh Shai for more faith to go out there and do this work, man. All right. And that's a part of staying in the spirit. A man that has faith is going to watch. A man that has faith is going to pray. A man that has faith is going to stay diligent and give all diligence to make his calling and election sure, man. All right. So with that, man, Lord willing, you are more edified. I'm going to close out on that, man. Shalom to the hopeful elect. All praises to Yahweh, Shai. Double honor to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone. Shalom.